All right, Shalom. I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you people ignorantly call God, Bahashem, which is in the name of Yahweh Shah, the name of the only begotten Son, who you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Those are the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Son. And the plus, I want to give a shout out to you, Akim, is pushing his word about the four corners of the earth, who's also uplifting the name of Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shah. Okay? And to you confusion of faces out there whose bloodline traces back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which makes you Israelites as well. By blood, though you may look like the other nations, the heathens, plus if your sea line goes to a so-called Negro, Latino, or Native American man, okay? And if your spirit bear witness with this truth and you can hear it and receive it, okay? So you confusion the faces, you are Israelites. That's if you, you apply, all those apply to you. Two sisters that do listen and learn Shalom. To the elect of the nation of Israel, okay, wherever you may be, uh, who this word is going out to, wherever you may be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, shalom to you and um, to so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you are the Hebrew Israelites, the true Jews of the Bible, okay, not black, not Latino, not Native American, those are all bywords placed upon you by your oppressors, okay, these these other nations, and um. You know, I'm here with another uh, video or lesson. Um, This is basically a World War Three update, if I like to call it. Yeah, World War Three update. It says, prepare war for war and boost training. Chinese military tells troops. Okay. And uh, I actually have, after I read this article, a video I'm going to show you on RT America. It says Chinese troops should ramp up training, advance top-notch technology, and above all, prepare for war. People's Liberation Army Daily and Armed Forces newspaper said in a New, Year, New Year's message, drilling soldiers and war preparations will be top, top priorities for the armed forces in 2019. The official military outlet told the troops it urged the readers that at no time should we allow any slack in these areas. We should all we should be well prepared for all directions of military struggle and comprehensive and comprehensively improve troops combat response emer in emergencies to ensure we can meet the challenge and win when there is a situation. The stern message said the, the uh, PLA daily also pledged to reform the army through science and technology, along with strengthening ties with the ruling Chinese Communist Party. The, the editorial went public a couple of days before Chinese President Ex Jinping has called to force un reunification with Taiwan, while saying it would be would safeguard the interests and well-being of the islanders. Ex noted Beijing reserves the op option of taking all necessary measures against outsiders hampering the process. Basically, they're basically saying the United States, because the only one that's really hampering the process of China, including all everybody, everybody really, is the United States. Okay. Taiwan is one of the issues that add fuel to a, fuel to a U.S.-China spat since President Donald Trump vowed military support to the island. China has denounced the move, warning the U.S. against meddling in its internal affairs. Taiwan, aside the, the South China Sea, is another place that saw mounting tensions between U.S. and China. Last year, X also urged the troops to concentrate prep preparations for a military conf conflict. We have to step up combat readiness exercises, joint exercises, and confrontational exercises to enhance servicemen's capabilities and preparation for war. And there's a video right there. It says Washington strategists openly designed designate Beijing a military opponent, even alleging, allegating, alleging that it may surpass the U.S. in some areas. The Pentagon, for instance, has repeatedly warned that the Chinese, U the Chinese military could leave the U.S. behind deploying maritime and air power as well as in developing future weapon systems. Some members of U.S. military elite also speculated on the prospect of being involved into a military confrontation with China. Retired Lieutenant Gen General Ben Hodges, former U.S. commander in Europe, once suggested that Washington have to deal with the Chinese threat in the Pacific. The United States needs a very strong European pillar, he told the Warsaw Security Forum in October. I think in 15 years it is not in inevitable 
but it is very strong likelihood that we will be at the war with China. That's not all we're going to be at war with. But I'm going to show you uh, the video. Pro-war hawks and neocons to supposedly lefty-leaning newsreaders about President Trump's decision to pull troops out of Syria. It's almost as if that consortium that I just described, that strange bedfellow consortium, is saying that any war is a good war. Well, if that's the case, and what these pro-war newsmakers and news presenters want is war, is it possible that they may end up getting more than they actually bargained for in the form of a much larger engagement, say with Iran? Joining me now to talk about this is former Pentagon official Michael Malouf, uh, who's been looking into what the United States next play is. Why does Iran come to this conversation suddenly? Well, the question is going to be what happens to those troops that are being withdrawn from Syria and Afghanistan. They're going into Iraq. Mm -hmm. And if you'll recall President uh, Trump's uh, speech on New Year's Eve to mm -hmm. the troops, he talked about how the troops are going to remain they're going to be there to spring into Syria if necessary. But then he said, and Iran, to watch Iran. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to send special forces troops into Iran? Well, is something being planned? I, my, the one thing I would watch out for is, is he going to be withdrawing any troops also from South Korea mm. in, in this time frame? So you got to keep in mind You're that, talking almost about a consolidation of troops. I mean, if you take, exactly. a, if you take a bunch out of uh, uh, Syria, you take a bunch out of Afghanistan, take a bunch out of, as you mentioned, uh, part of South Korea, yeah. my but, God, you've got a lot of troops. This is speculation, but uh, Iraq could become the new hub for U.S. Middle East policy. Iraq. Iraq. For the pos positioning of these troops. And the, this, this is sort of a, a continuation from uh, John Bolton's activities from 2003. Well, hold on a minute. When you say Iraq, I'm a little confused. Do you mean Iraq as a launching point to po possibly yes. engage Iran? Yes. Because it it's could. right next door. That's correct. Yeah. You, you, now, you mentioned John Bolton. This is interesting that you would mention him because Trump has been saying all along, and he campaigned on the promise, and we know that not everything Donald Trump campaigns on actually comes to fruition, but let us just say that Donald Trump was true when he said, the first thing I want to do is get out of these unnecessary wars. Mm -hmm. It's about America first. Let's mm -hmm. stop taking care of everybody else's business, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But there seems to be a change in this administration. Yeah. Who's driving this? Uh, there's a Trump foreign policy and a Trump administration foreign policy, and the neocons have basically taken over uh, Trump's foreign policy. You're talking about your friend John Bolton? He's not my friend, but yes. You've spoken to John Bolton? Yes. What, what have you learned well, when you've spoken to John Bolton in the past? Well, in 2003, I briefed him when he was the Under Secretary of State, uh, I, ostensibly on terrorism. Uh -huh. However, his vision for that region was we were going to take Baghdad first, then use that as a springboard to take Damascus, Tehran, um, uh, Libya, yeah. and then Saudi Arabia. All the countries at that time which were regarded as enemies of uh, Israel. Bolton has always been known as a guy who no war is enough. I mean, if, if I hope I'm not overstating this, but he's definitely a hot. Well, he's never been in, he's never been in the military. He's never been in a war. I've, I've been associated with at least two wars, and that's the last thing in the world we want. But he seems to be, he was the biggest proponent of the war in Iraq, the invasion of yes. Iraq. And you think good betting money would say he would probably be one of the biggest proponents of the war, of a war in Iran. Yeah, he's been meeting very recently in Albania, for example, with MEK, which is the opposition, one of the many opposition groups of, of Iran. Uh, they, they want the administration to go on in to... Uh, uh, into a, uh, Iran. You know, while I have you here, because mm -hmm. we're talking about this, mm -hmm. let, let me just ask you, is John Bolton a really smart, measured guy or not? He's smart, but he's calculating. And this whole thing is what the withdrawals and what have you. I think he's manipulating the president at this point, And I think that what we're mm. seeing is something in which John Bolton is planning something bigger and he's working in cahoots with Netanyahu. This is great insight. Thank you, Michael. As Pleasure. usual, well Pleasure. done. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our... All right, that's the video. Okay? So there it is. I showed you an article, and I just showed you a video. Okay? So now is the time for to get these scriptures. Hold on. All right. So this is going to be my first scripture.
this um the book of Matthew. I'm gonna start the third verse, but the point is in six. And this Matthew 24 and 3, and says, And he sat upon the mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him private, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay? So the disciples are asking Yahweh, okay, who you people are going to call Jesus, what will be the signs of the times, man? Okay? And Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, so I am Yahweh Shah, well, the Messiah, okay? It says Christ, but I don't like saying Christ, and shall deceive many. It says, and ye shall have wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, man. Okay? And that's what you're seeing, man. You're seeing, okay? This is one. Wars, okay? Rumors of wars about what these nations are going to do, okay? What they're uh, 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 prepping for. Look, okay? This is all that, man. Okay? And then the one thing it said on uh, this is an article on here also on how uh China they said China now got what they call the mother of all bombs basically uh they got their hands on uh, even more powerful nuclear uh weapons okay so here it is you got Russia that got hypersonic uh weapons okay missiles China got what they call the mother of all bombs and even Iran. It's an article on here talking about how Iran, Press TV, how Iran, they have their hands on the arsenal of missiles now, okay? And then that's all of a sudden you see that the United States was thinking about, well, saying that they're going to strike Iran, man, okay? All these nations are getting their hands on weapons. These missiles are going to be used to destroy America, man, okay? This is Ecclesiastes. I should have got this first, okay? Um, should have got this one. That would have been better. This is Ecclesiastes three and one. To 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 everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I'm just gonna skip to the uh scripture. It says, "A time to love." This is the eighth verse. A time to love and a time to hate. Okay, this is the time. we're in the time of hate. Look how uh, 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 high the uh, racial uh, uh, divide is in this country, okay? Look how it's worse has gotten. But here's the point. A time of war and a time of peace. And that's the time we're in. We're in the time of war. What war? World War Three. okay? World War Three is prophesied to happen in, this, in, this, in, the, in the scriptures, man. This is Ezekiel. Okay? Because if... uh. America strikes Iran, okay? If America strikes Iran, let's just say it goes that way. Because it's just a whole bunch of things that's happening at once. Let's say if America strikes Iran, then according to Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, Russia's going to step in. Because it tells you, uh, 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 let me just get it. You know, I wasn't planning on getting it, but I got to get it anyway. This is Ezekiel 38, 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God. God is the Russians, according to the scriptures. The land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesied against him. And say, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth all thy army, horses, and horsemen, all of them with clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklets and shields, all of them handling swords. Okay? Which is saying it's gonna put Russia in the uh that that hate America spirit, which that's already happened. And here here's the uh uh the people that Russia's with. This is the fifth verse, Persia. Persia real quick. I just wanna get it. Let's look up Iran. Iran also called Persia. Okay, I just wanted to get that. So it's talking about Iran. Okay, Ethiopia. That's Kush. That's the Hamites. That's who you people know as the so-called Africans today. And Libya also Hamites. With them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer. Gomer, according to the scriptures, is who? Turkey. Okay, Turkey being a NATO ally, man. 
and all his bands, the House of Togama, of the New Accords, and all his bands and many people with thee. But here's the point. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. And who is that talking to? Russia. Gog. Okay? And you have right here the United States preparing to strike Iran if they want to. Okay? So if they do that, then what does that mean? Everybody else going to get involved. And mainly Russia. Russia is that, that, that head, that wall that America can't basically get through. Okay? This is, um... Joel. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. This is, uh, Joel. Three. And nine. It says, proclaim me this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. That's happening. All these nations that they, they're doing military training, training. They're doing uh, uh they're getting their hands on the missiles, okay? The the weapons of the end the, the Lord's weapon of choice, okay? Um the, yeah, that's what you're seeing, man. Okay, you're seeing these nations get prepared for war. Okay? Beat your plowshares and the swords and your prone hooks and the spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Okay? Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. They're the cause thy mighty ones who come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be waking and come out to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Who is that? The Middle East. Okay? That's where this war is mainly going to take place in that Middle Eastern region. Okay? For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Because Proverbs 21 says... 21 and 1 says, the king's heart, which these are all talking about, these, these leaders, are in the hands of the Lord, man. He turned them it with a soever as the rivers of water. I butchered it, you know. Okay, which that word heart goes into the end of mind, okay. The word lob, and then it goes into the end of mind. And that's what he's doing. He's working on the end of mind, these heathens, to prepare war to go up against each other. Okay. And why is he doing that? Okay. This is Joel, the third chapter in the first verse. I'm going to get started with this. It says, For behold, in those days and that time when I shall bring again the captivity of, of, of Judah and Jerusalem. Okay? And actually, let me get this. This is Jeremiah 50. This is why, okay, then I'm going to go back to that. It's Jeremiah 50, verse 33. It says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And who was that talking about? That's talking about all the tribes, from the so-called Negroes to the so-called Latinos to the so-called Native Americans, man. We're all oppressed together. Okay, where are we mainly oppressed at though? We're mainly, most of the tribes are mainly here in America, okay? And we're being oppressed. All of us are being oppressed. All of us are under the uh, curses. And we're being oppressed by Esau and these other heathen nations, okay? And it's not just America. Wherever we've been scattered, okay? We're being oppressed. Even the confusion of faces, okay? It says, And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. And that's the point we're in, man. We're still... Uh, 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 in captivity under this so-called white man. We're still getting, you know, uh, uh, trampled over by uh, Esau and these other nations. Esau, even who is the so-called white man, by the way. Okay? This is what I want to get. This is Joel 3 and 1. For behold, in those days and that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah, which Judah is you so-called Negroes, and Jerusalem. I will also gather, really all the tribes, by the way. The second verse. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they scattered amongst the nations. Okay? How will we get scattered among the nations? Okay? By way of uh, the transatlantic slave trade. Okay? And part of my land, who's in our homeland right now? These heathens. Okay? You got the Amalekites who are also Edomites, the head tribe of the uh, nation of Edom. 
Okay? You got uh the so-called Palestinian the Arabs, basically. Okay? And you have a little bit of Hamites in there. Okay? They are fighting over that land, which it doesn't belong to them. Okay? It belongs to us, man. Okay? It belongs to us. Okay, so that's why the Lord is doing what he's doing, okay? For the sake of Israel, starting with the elect, okay? This is, uh... I'm going to end it with this. I could keep going, but I'm just going to end it. This is Revelations. Actually, let me get this real quick. Because this is going to be the last war. It's going to be the last wars of, of all. This is going to be the last and only war, man. Okay? After this, there will be no more wars. This is Isaiah 34, verse 1. Come near ye nations to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. Okay? He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood, man. Okay? And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, as all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree, man. Okay? So there's going to be a lot of death when it's World, when World War Three. Which where it basically in World War Three, it's just a matter. I always say this: it's a matter of time before it's official that everybody knows that we're at war. Okay, you still have a lot of these people out here that don't see what's going on. Okay, America's broke. Okay, and if America's broke, then basically all the other nations are broke because all the other nations are up under America. So what do they have to do? They have to go to war, man. Look at the stock market. Okay. This is why it's coming to this point, man. Okay? You know, when they start drafting you people, a lot of you jakes is in this war. Okay, you're going to get destroyed, man. Okay? A lot of you that uh, go in these wars or already in the military, when this happens, you're not coming back, man. You're dead, man. Okay? The fifth verse, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Okay? Come on. Look at that. What's Idumia? Edom. Who was Edom? Okay. The elder twin brother of Jacob. Jacob being who? The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Okay. And the confusion of faces. I always bring them up. Okay. Hence the region Idumia occupied by him. Edom. Edomites. So this is talking about who? The nation of Edom. Okay. That's the first one that he, the Lord says sword is going to come upon us. You, you, you Edomites, man. You so-called white people, okay? Because you have us in the, uh, captivity. And shall come upon the people of my curse to judgment. The rest of you heathens, okay? You're not, you're not innocent, okay? And even two-thirds of our own people, okay? Because you got two-thirds of our people in this man's military, okay? Serving this man after this man and made it clear that he doesn't like him. You've been shoving a foot up. Our asses for so long, man. Okay, so the Lord's gonna destroy you too. Okay, but I uh end it with this. So you 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 uh you so called uh Negroes, you so called Latinos, you so called Native Americans. Okay, you better repent, man, because everything is 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 speeding up so fast now. Then you see time flying. Okay. So it's either you repent or you're going to get destroyed in the calamities that the Lord's going to bring upon this place, man. World War Three being one of them. Okay? This is Revelations 11 verse 14. The second woe, which the second woe is World War Two. Okay? It's past. That's gone now. World War Two has been over. Okay? And behold, the third woe coming quickly. And that's what we're approaching, man. Okay? It's come it's, it's got to come now because these nations are broke. These nations don't have money anymore. 
So what's the solution? World War Three, okay? But um, that is my uh, lesson. You know, Lord willing, this is edifying to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand while you still had the chance, okay? Shalom to the elect.